Hi everyone, welcome to our first lesson for this year for Algebra 2. During these, this is going to be short overviews of the uh, skills and concepts that we're going to be covering. So when I go through these examples and these, and these problems, what I suggest you to do is pause, write down the question, write down the problem, and then follow along with me. If you, feel, if you want to pause, try to do it, and then see how you do with it, that's also fine, but find a, find a notebook, write down the problem, write down, and then do it, try it, follow along with me, whatever works best. So each time we get to a problem, just pause, copy down that problem, and go forward from there. Okay, so this is Mr. Robbins talking, if you're curious, um, and that's, that's the voice that you'll be hearing. So the first concept that we're going to cover out of our summer packet is going to be the distributive property. So the distributive property is when we have parentheses and numbers, they're symbols in front of parentheses. So we're going to distribute, distribute meaning multiply whatever number is in front of the parentheses to everything inside the parentheses, okay? So for this problem right here, number one, we have negative five parentheses, three X minus four minus in parentheses, 14 X plus seven. So we want to simplify this. And the first step to simplifying is to distribute. So we're going to look at each of the parentheses. Whatever is in front of the parentheses, we're going to distribute. So the first of the parentheses, we have a negative 5. That negative, make sure that negative stays connected with the 5. So it's negative 5 being distributed to the 3x. And negative 5 being distributed to the negative 4. So it's negative 5 times 3, which is negative 15x and negative 5 times negative 4 minus and negative go together. Negative 5 times negative 4, negative times negative is a positive. 5 times 4 is 20. So this first set of parentheses is taken care of. Now we want to look at the second set. There's a minus sign in front of it, but no number. What do we do? Well, if there's no number, you can assume that we're put in a 1. Okay, so now it's negative 1 that will be multiplied, distributed to each of these. So negative 1 times 14x becomes negative 14x. Negative 1 times 7. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Now we're left with this negative 15x plus 20 minus 14x minus 7. We want to combine our like terms. X's go with X's. Numbers go with numbers. So, negative 15x minus 14x, it's like negative 15 minus 14, a negative 15 plus a negative 14, that becomes negative 29x, and positive 20 minus 7, that's like saying 20 minus 7, that's going to equal 13, and that's going to be positive 13, so we could put a plus sign, and this is our result. Okay, that's the first example of distributive property. Next problem, we're going to look at combining like terms a little bit closer. So when we combine like terms, we're looking for the same variable, same exponent. Those will be able to be combined. Okay, you have to have the same exponent as well. So again, pause, write down this problem, try it, come back to it, or follow along with me. All right, let's look at the problem. So we have 3x squared minus 14x plus 3 plus 17x minus 5x squared. All right, so we want to find like terms. Like terms being the same variable, same exponent. So same variable, and same exponent. So exponent is the little number on the top, whatever power we're being raised to. So in this case, 2x squared, 2 would be the exponent. So we have 3x squared. We want to find a like term to 3x squared. Same variable, so we need to have an x, but we also need to have an x squared. Same variable, same exponent. So the only like term would be this 5x squared. Now, since there's a minus sign in front, it's going to include that negative 5x squared. So that's going to be negative 5x squared. So the, the sign in front of the number or the quantity, the term, it goes with whatever is after it. All right, so now we combine them. We do the operation. It's going to be 3 minus 5. So you combine the coefficients, the number in front of the variables. 3 minus 5 becomes negative 
x squared. So it's 3 minus 5. 3x squared minus 5x squared. So we get negative 2x squared. Now we're going to look for another set of like terms, variables. So the next term that we see is negative 14x. So the negative is because the number's in front of the x. What goes with it? The same variable, x, find the other x, plus, four, plus 17x. So we have negative 14 plus 17. So the negative 14x plus 17x. Negative 14 plus 17, we're left with positive plus 3x. Okay, so those are taken care of. What do we have here? We have a plus 3. Does anything go with the 3? Is there any other numbers there without variables? No, there's nothing else there. Bring it down, it stays as is. So our resulting quantity is going to be negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 3. So that's a little closer look at combining the terms. Okay. Now the final problem, the final concept we're going to look at is how to evaluate expressions given a value of a variable. Okay, so our first problem, the problem we're going to look at is 5y minus 7 divided by 6y squared plus 2 for when y equals 2. So again, pause, write this problem down, try it, or follow along with me. Okay, so what we're going to do in this case is whatever value equals y, we are going to substitute that value in. Substitute, or you might hear plug it in. So we're going to substitute that value in. Okay, and then we're going to do the operations, and then do the operations. So we're going to simplify. So we're going to sub, substitute the value and plug it in. So we're going to become 5 instead of y. We're going to put this value in parentheses times 2 minus 7. Use parentheses when you substitute them in. Okay, so use parentheses. Parentheses tell you to multiply, and it's going to help keep everything in line. Over 6. Again, use parentheses. Instead of y, it becomes 2 squared plus 2. And then we're going to simplify it out. Simplify the top, the numerator, simplify the denominator, and then we could take care of the fraction after that. So the top is going to be 5 times 2 is 10 minus 7 over 6 times 2 squared. Or order of operations say to do the exponent part first. So 2 squared is going to be 4 times 6 plus 2. 6 times 4 is going to be 24 plus 2. Keep going. So I have 10 minus 7 is 3 over 26. Does that simplify at all? Answer that is no. So that means that fraction 3 over 26 is just fine. Fractions as answers is very, very good. Don't worry about if you get a fraction for an answer. It's all fine.